Thank you, Erika. Hi, everyone. So welcome, welcome. So I do have my toast beer with me tonight. <laughs> Exciting. Um, so uh, Rob, we always start by asking our guests uh, to bring a circular starter conversation. So it's something physical that inspired you basically around circular economy. I was wondering, do you have something with you? Well, it's Sophie. It's obviously a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? It's kind of. Uh, I think when you when you have a product-based uh, circular economy solution, it would be uh, yeah, shameless. Uh, well, it's just shameless to just obviously make sure I uh, provide as much plug as possible. In fact, I might just sit the entire um, conversation like this. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so obviously, it's it's beer. Basically, that was the uh, that was the inspiration. Um, the idea uh, started over a beer, uh, like like all good uh, conversations do um, and uh, and when we realized we could brew really delicious craft beer using yesterday's bread from from bakeries um, and it was just kind of the, the perfect circular uh, story it, it yeah just for us it was it was a bit of a, a no-brainer so um, yeah I'm afraid uh, my uh, my my sort of item is is our product <laughs> that was quite cool. Well, actually, you know, talking about that, um, there's something that fasc fascinates me because, as you say, you use bread to make beers, but when you see bread and beer, this is certainly not the two things that you would put together, either by being, you know, the ingredients that you use or the outcome. So I was wondering if we could, you know, go back to the beginning of that story and really, you know, understand a bit more about how did it all started, basically, and uh, and really how did and, and how did you basically scale that up and realize that it was really a vibe, uh, vibe? Yeah, 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 of course. And um, it's interesting you say that you wouldn't necessarily put two, the like two together, because I think for, for me, it was almost the opposite. It was the fact that, um, so there's some circular solutions that I would say have a little bit of a yuck factor. Um, that's the sort of technical term I would give it, um, where sort of upcycling some food items might not necessarily leave a consumer thinking yes delicious um and that is not a critique of anything it's just a reality of of some of the like circular economy in, in food and drink uh whereas for bread into beer it felt like a real kind of no-brainer and um beer is 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 often referred as just liquid bread the the two are exactly the same it's just beer is a lot wetter um, and so that's uh, that's the technical term for it, I think. And so, um, yeah, I guess I guess when we when we realised it, and so the first ever beer recipe brewed um, about four or five thousand years ago was brewed with bread, um, and for millennia, uh, beer was routinely brewed using surplus bread. So this was just the norm. It wouldn't be the entire uh, grain uh, ingredient in beer, uh, but it would be a significant. Um, amount of the of the grain in in beer and you would just grab whatever you could uh, thousands of years ago and part of that was just grabbing bread from the the local bakery that might have some leftover or if you just had some leftover uh, you would just put it in you're getting the carbohydrate the sugar from the from the bread that you're then fermenting you need to add more yeast uh, but you're fermenting that and how you would normally make beer is in these days so it went completely out the norm after the industrial revolution uh, we just put 100% barley uh, or wheat um, but just 100% sort of virgin grain into our into our beer production. Um, you mix it with hot water, you add hops, you add yeast, and you get beer. It's a bit more complicated than that, but that's, that's basically how it works. What we're doing is replacing one third of the barley with yesterday's bread um, and trying to bring this yeah, quite ancient craft back into the mainstream, as with so many of these circular economy solutions, there's this kind of common sense that used to exist that doesn't exist anymore and so trying to bring it back so yeah it was a friend's idea so a friend of mine Tristram Stewart who's a food waste uh, activist environmentalist uh, had the idea and uh, yeah we're sort of having this conversation he's very charismatic and so he was kind of saying Rob like let's start up a beer company and get wasted on waste um, and I was just like <laughs> sort of uh, he had me uh, sort of a he had me at hello moment and um, it was just an absolute kind of, yeah, kind of from there, it's been a whirlwind. That was five, five and a half years ago that the idea was kind of uh, born. And then we launched the business five years ago and yeah, quite a sort of a, a whirlwind uh, since then. And it's pretty good beer as well. Yeah. Hope so, hope so. So this one, yeah, so this one I'm drinking is, um, is our first 0.5%. So this is a lemongrass lager and um, 
So as well as having uh, sort of, there's a slice of surplus bread in there somewhere. So all of the sort of toast cans or bottles have the equivalent to a slice of surplus bread. Uh, and bread's the biggest food waste in the UK. I should sort of, you know, emphasize that. So 44% of all bread that's baked in the UK is wasted, it's bonkers. Uh, the food industry has by far the biggest environmental uh, impact. We typically think of energy industry, transportation industry. I think most people in this kind of environment would, would be familiar um, with that. Um, and you typically think of them in isolation, but it's the food industry that causes a lot of deforestation, uses a lot of energy, uses a lot of transportation, and we're wasting a third of what we produce. And so I guess beer for us is just highlighting a really important, much broader issue, but we think it's a fun sort of way to highlight what is a really important issue by tackling the, 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 the issue itself. And then we pour all our profits into environmental charities fighting the issue at a more systemic level. So we're a for-profit business, pay ourselves, pay the staff, all of that. Um, but instead of myself as an owner taking like profit share out of the business, um, that just goes to, to charity. That, that, that's a fascinating model because often you see it, you know, like with the sustainability, you've got the three different pillars and people are really, you know, fighting the, for the, the environment and so on. But really having that ability to actually connect the three and balancing it out is absolutely fascinating. So I'm quite curious, actually, can you tell us a bit more about that social angle? Is it something that, you know, what's the impact, I guess, on what you do, but also maybe who you are, I guess? Yeah, I mean, it's it's literally everything, uh, I guess, that we are. Um, I'm conscious that, you know, obviously it's, uh, it is it is an alcoholic uh, beverage. Uh, so there's potentially some challenge there. But like I said, you know, I've got a really delicious alcohol free um, beer that we that we do here uh, that I'm really enjoying. And um, but ultimately, yeah, sort of a, a social um, sort of values are just yeah, ingrained within us. We're a certified B Corporation. It means we put um, sort of profit alongside people and planet. So how we um, build the business, our, our team, our culture um, is, uh, I think, fairly sort of forward thinking. Um, and and certainly our, our approach to uh, the environment is is I think about as, as progressive as, as you can get. Um, and so we're conscious about obviously how we're making the product, then what we're sort of doing with the profits, um, the partnerships that we build. So this this beer is brewed in a partnership with T Pigs, another B Corp zero plastic business. It's all about raising awareness of the issue of of plastic waste, but also rivers. Um, and so we build these different partnerships to try and raise awareness about different environmental and social issues. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of everything to the business. Every business decision we take is interconnected with our purpose. Oh, that's fascinating. We actually had uh, Emily from Oddbox recently as well. And she said oh, awesome. we had a collaboration there as well. So that's... Yeah. It's more because we need to find out. <laughs> yeah, we've got it. So we've got a really great beer that we brewed. Uh, when was it? Two days ago um, using some of their surplus mangoes um, and then also work with Flawsome, which is another really great uh, circular economy uh, product uh, that make really delicious juices from sort of wonky and ugly fruits. Uh, and so, yeah, we've got Flawsome mango puree um, in here and yeah, a load of sort of wonky uh, mangoes. I think we saved about 800 mangoes. Um, so it's going to be a really juicy mango um, IPA. So uh, yeah, watch this space. That one, that one will be out the tanks in about four weeks. Oh, that's brilliant because that's what we're hoping. We're like we all want an odd box toast one for the <laughs> discussion. <laughs> Not yet. We were it's coming. It's coming four weeks away. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, right. So I've got another question because you were talking a little bit about your brand, and I think what I really like about what you're doing is that you, you really integrated the brand as well. So you you use like play on words. I even see you know on my can. Sorry, going to be happy about the plug, but there is a barcode made in the shape of a toast. So you really thought about all those different aspects. So I was wondering, you know, when we're at a stage where we need to convince or encourage more customers basically to think about alternative options, what role do you think like brands can play in that? Yeah, so I think the most critical thing is the quality of the product. So um, and to 100% like sort of judge our own selves, I think quite harshly there's been times where we haven't got that absolutely right. And we focus maybe more on the social mission, our environmental purpose, our brand um, more broadly. 
and haven't necessarily had the same level of focus on the product and the quality. And at the end of the day, if somebody wants a beer, unless, you know, again, probably preaching to the converted, unless you're in the kind of environment which is still relatively limited, where people would be willing to compromise slightly on the product in order to have something that's that's really making a difference. Most consumers want all of it. They want a product which is going to taste absolutely delicious, is going to look great, is going to be at the right price point and is going to do good. Um, and I think that's where like the rise of B Corps have really come through. So there's some really great B Corps that are ticking most of those boxes. Um, and I think for us, we were focused so much on just zero waste um, that we, yeah, we, we, we probably at times didn't get it quite right on, on the quality of the product uh, and just even the consistency. Um, and so over the last kind of 18 months, uh, we've really made, I think, some quite positive leaps and bounds in just nailing kind of better beers and better beers. So the, the even the sort of limited edition series that we're doing at the moment. So we brewed a beer with divine chocolate in it and it's a chocolate stout um, using some surplus cocoa, surplus cocoa, who believe it. Um, and um, and so we're, we're, we're really trying to just get better and better at, at, at that and the, the quality of the product because the brand will, I think, only take you so far. Uh, and so uh, it's easy to kind of sell somebody a product uh, or with a like great message, obviously like message in a bottle kind of thing with toast, like you can sell someone it, but they're not going to come back for another one unless it tastes great. So it, it needs to, like brand is so much more than just uh, a product image. I love what you're saying in terms of the consistency as well and really looking at all these different touch points. It's quite cool as well because the collaboration can really bring different, you know, creativity somehow as well. <laughs> oh yeah, great fun. I mean, uh, yeah, we're, we're sort of doing a... Um, a hazy kind of pale ale with Rebel Kitchen um, who make um, kind of dairy-free uh, products. And so they use lots of oats in their oat milk. And so we're able to put a load of oats from their supply chain into our beer and just fun things like that. we're doing a coffee porter with Cafe Direct. So yeah, we can kind of, um, oh, a lot of what Toast does is form partnerships, collaborations. So um, one of our core values of the business is companionship. And companionship literally means uh, to sort of to break bread with um, if you sort of take it back to its sort of Latin origins. Uh, and so like, yeah, companionship is, is just everything about toast. So we're constantly forming partnerships. We open source our recipe. We're very open. We're very kind of um, pro people taking the idea on. So the recipe has been downloaded 60,000 times now, I think. Um, and just want to kind of keep forming partnerships with other businesses so that we can evangelize about um, yeah, saving the world with beer, but also just the circular economy and social enterprise in general. That's really cool. Right, so I've got a lot of more questions, but I'm conscious that I can see, I keep seeing the chat popping. So I'm gonna ask you one more <laughs> and then I'm gonna pass on. Um, it's just because as you were saying, um, you know, it's like really inspiring, I guess, all the people to do that. And we hear that as well in Reading and other places as well, people are like, where to start? So I was wondering, you know, what would be re your recommendation for anyone wanting to start a business in the circular economy? Um, so I think, I guess the most simple answer is just to get going, um, because there is a really, I would say big business opportunity, um, in this space. Um, there is a lot of consumer interest and demand for products with a purpose. Um, and I think an ever growing environmental awareness, thankfully, um, that is still uh, a, a big growing awareness curve that most of society's on. And so one is just to get going, back yourself, believe in the idea. Um, be careful with the yuck factor, like I said, uh, with food and drink. I do think that is a like, genuine, serious thing, though, to consider. Like, Do just sound it out with a few people if it is a food and a drink thing. Listen carefully to their answers in case they tell you like maybe sort of rethink it. I guess it's like, this isn't circular economy obviously, but it's that concept of, you know, sort of grasshopper cricket flower um, where for some people that is just a bit too extreme and, it, and it's a market that wouldn't necessarily explode. Um, but yeah, so it's just really thinking it through, but then other sort of products, um, we, we got some key rings, uh, bottle openers that were made from car, uh, like hubcaps. Um, and that again for me was just like a perfect example of a like nice little circular economy in, in action. Um, 
and so yeah i guess just back yourself go for it get it started um most of these things don't require a huge amount of cash and just get your product online because what i've realized um over the last year about 20 years too late is that yeah jeff bezos was onto a pretty good thing when he came up with amazon <laughs> and it turns out that that's a really good place to sell your product um and i think myself and millions of other um basically consumer good products uh have sort of recognized that yeah we were so focused on traditional retail and the last year forced us to change our hand if i was starting a business from scratch now i would definitely definitely just do it all online um for at least the first year or two um we went very quickly into waitrose um into co-op into a cardo um into sort of yeah bars and pubs and, and that's great but it comes with a whole world of other challenges. I think if you can build up a really solid uh, following uh, and loyal customer base yourself, where you can have direct interaction with your customers um, and anyone can start a website, um, you really can. Like, there's no excuse. Awesome. Thank you. Right. So last thing that we always ask our guests is basically to recommend an organization or topic or something like that that, you know, other people, other guests we could have on this um, on this conversation. Who would that be? Oh, I think so. I'm a massive fan at the moment. Obviously, it's a little bit limited, but I'm a massive fan of um, like Too Good To Go and Karma, mm -hmm. the kind of food sharing apps. Um, so I don't know whether you've had them before. Um, yeah, Olio, not them. So. <laughs> um, so, OK, yeah, Olio, fantastic as well, uh, but a very different business model. Um, mm -hmm. And I, um, I guess Olio, I kind of I love them but i quite like the commercial side of too good to go the sort of idea that you are paying for something and you then sort of there's a bit more of a certainty as to and it just feels win 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 because yeah the the business is kind of able to put up a dozen croissants or whatever on their page that they haven't sold at breakfast time so you can then buy it at half price after lunch time it's just it's a neat idea and i think it just yeah. works really well so yeah big fan of that Bestie. Cool, thank you. Right, so now I'm going to give back the task to Erica to go through the chat and see what oh. some amazing questions we've got. Yeah, it's been a really exciting chat actually going on on the side as well. Oh my goodness, um, am I, am I I'm going, bombarded with <laughs> I'm going to kind of try and summarise a, num a few questions that we've got quite a lot of interested brewers, home brewers, um, and also supply chain areas. So could you tell us a bit about the logistics of brewing toast you know where where the bread comes from um what types do you need different specialist equipment um so yeah there's been quite a few questions like trying to understand the process a bit so um very straightforward it's uh brewing in general not rocket science um and brewing with bread also kind of uh not not sort of rocket science so um you can basically replace I would say 10% would be my recommended amount of the, it's called the grist. So those that are sort of homebrewers or familiar with brewing would know this, but for everyone else, basically the, the grain that you're getting, all the nectar, the kind of the sugary golden liquid um, that, that you're sort of uh, getting when you first brew, um, replace about a third of that with bread. Um, when you're getting the bread, you can really use anything be careful not to use anything too high in salt so i wish i had a more romantic story of like the toast team on a pedal bike going to artisanal bakeries and getting the sourdoughs and the baguettes and filling our baskets but they're often very high in salt so the more delicious the bread normally the higher the salt content and some of these breads are like two to three percent salt content and that won't be great for beer that will really come through it's okay for a very dark beer and you can have that salted caramel kind of a, a note which is fine um but in a pale ale you don't want it to be salty um so sometimes the more like bog standard cheap and cheerful um so yeah sort of log into the olio app where you're then going to basically be able to find low there's always so much bread on olio from like tesco's and places like that that would otherwise have gone to waste and just yeah you're sort of white king's mill uh is is really great for brewing i'm afraid um and so high Some in sugar um, yeah i was just gonna say just on the bread note there was also a specific question about um i think somebody had heard before from Tristan. it was often also the ends of bread used yeah, so sandwiches we, and things but yeah, so has the pandemic also kind of altered your bread waste supply <laughs> yeah Mass massively so yeah the the 
a lot of what we uh, worked with over the years is the end slice, um, the heel ends of a, of a loaf of bread not needed in the sandwich industry. Uh, so obviously you never get those crusts, which is crazy. I think there's a massive business opportunity to launch a sandwich company that's only the crusts because uh, there are millions, literally millions of crusts that go to waste every single um, uh, day. Uh, and so, yeah, we've, a, we've been able to just like, you know, scratch the surface of that part of waste. Um, and so, yeah, the, the crusts brew up really well as well. Uh, but yeah, basically you want to just like chop it up, turn it into a kind of crouton. Uh, so ideally you would kind of you dry it a little bit. Our process is a little bit more evolved now, but effectively you're just like turning it into a, a kind of a crouton. Uh, so we brew around a ton of surplus bread a week. Um, but um for a small brew yeah you, know, you just need like 10 10 kg or something just uh like 10 10 or 15 it, loaves is it all quite localized then within the uk and and the uk waste bread supply and i suppose that that links with if you're going to go well, i don't know i don't know if you're in any other countries yet but that way how would would you target their bread supply i suppose for sustainability? yeah exactly so we so we've um we launched a business in in sort of a few different places we expanded to the us a couple of years ago but that was that's been quite a headache to be honest um and like we've brewed in south africa brazil iceland the netherlands australia new zealand like various places and always it's just about forming local partnerships so we will never export our product it's like water basically you don't export water it's bonkers so beer exports around the world which obviously happens all products are exported around the world it's just so wasteful it's so energy like inefficient um and especially with beer um, but again i shouldn't i shouldn't be too preachy and wax lyrical too much we are also very very self-aware at toast that a consumer good solution to environmentalism is pretty much an oxymoron on itself and so whilst the circular economy is good consumerism is not really good and so it's better than the alternative but that's why we open source the homebrew recipe and would really uh, encourage local i guess like small is beautiful is one of my like favorite books and like it's really returning everything back to its or like back and local would be would be ideal but we're also realists that um yeah most people won't homebrew and so if they're gonna have a beer make sure it's a more sustainable beer from toast rather than an alternative. Yeah, no, really interesting about the open source element, because I think I was involved in the open source circular economy kind of a number of years ago to, to kickstart that conversation around opening up and that role of design and business and, and truly kind of creating local and distributed and sustainable yeah. solutions. Um, I'm just looking at the time very, very shortly. I think you touched on this question a bit, but it was a there were a few, two questions or so about how you're doing loads of different partnerships. You must get lots of people or organizations or charities coming to you or, or likewise, but how do you, how do you choose those kind of collaborations? Yeah, I guess just values based really. So just, I get, well, values based and then also like with the commercial hat on of how big an opportunity would <laughs> be, but we would them. never compromise <laughs> our values for a commercial opportunity. But I guess because we're quite spoiled for choice at times, we will think about like how big the commercial opportunity is with those um, different opportunities. Uh, but we're, we're, we're just, you know, we're, we're very up for, for working with, with as many as, as possible. Brilliant. So um, I think we've covered so much already. I've already learned a lot more about brewing than I did originally. There's actually somebody on the chat who did an MSc on sustainable brewing. Um, so oh, maybe we'll, we'll get her <laughs> details and it might be interesting to link up. Toastdale apparently came up uh, best as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just I think that stat you said at the beginning, 44% wasted um, is, is huge. I wasn't aware that that bread was um, such a problem. And, and hopefully with people like yourselves and, and as with everyone and, and supermarkets and everyone taking their role seriously, um, that, that can be improved as well. And so many interesting business models, different collaborations. Um, yeah, it's been really, really inspiring. I'm going to kind of close the formal uh, part of <laughs> this evening by just saying those on the line um, that we do these events bi-weekly. Um, the next range of events are going to be on fashion and textiles. Uh, so we're building up a list of them. We've had about 
five or six, I think, Sophie, on food, packaging and drinks. And we've actually started a YouTube to um, condense or share them all openly um, as well in the knowledge. So keep an eye out for the next ones coming.